What's up guys, you're watching Tutorialism with me, C. Lopez. Now today I'm going to show you my top 5 tips for Ableton Live 9. Okay, so tip number 1, freezing tracks. Now everybody knows about freezing tracks. I know from our group that a lot of people have put off a lot of CPU intensive uh, plugins because they don't want to freeze the track because it feels like it's going to limit them to what they can do. But I'm going to show you that that's not necessarily the case. So I've got this Diva patch here, and it's just a crazy big patch. You see from my CPU usage there. It sounds nice, but it's unusable because of how much it's just spiking the CPU. So I'm going to click on it, right click and go freeze track all good tracks frozen now the problem with freezing the track is you can't do anything else to it because the track's frozen however if you click on it control g to put it into a group just gonna rename the group diva now what you can do is process your group channel so say I get an EQ on it, uh, take out the low end, uh, what else, a phaser on it, a bit of saturation maybe. Now what you can do, hold down shift, click on everything, group all that. Now you can unfreeze the track, get your rack, stick it on, and then freeze again. You've got everything the way it was, and your CPU is still looking healthy. I just quick note there, my CPU is kind of high, but that's due to my screen recording software, I think. All right. <clears throat> so, tip two. Now, we were talking yesterday about how lots of people, when they're using Ableton, they get stuck in session view. They make all these four bar loops, eight bar loops, and then just can't do anything with them. Now, I want to show you why that's not necessarily a bad thing. So what you want to do is, in this section here, click down, click down, scroll down, and go to Add Folder, and then add the folder where you keep all of your Ableton projects. So I've got mine here. Now, what you've, what you've done here, essentially is to save yourself hundreds and hundreds a quid on buying uh, sample CDs or not CDs anymore they're just sample libraries because now you've got all of your four bar loops eight bar loops that you've ever made all just ready and handy to use as such now I'm going to show you I might end up with something rubbish here because I'm not sure what I'm going to click on, but let's go to, hello. So let's go to Buddhism, what have I got on here? So let's see what, what did my shaker track sound like? Click the preview. good and you just double click on it and you've got it in the project uh, I've got no processing on this 
But if I did, all the processing I had in the original project would come up here. So let's mute this for now. Let's see what what bass I had came up for this. Okay, so you can see I had Max for Live on this bass. Okay, don't know what I was thinking there, it's a bit of a rubbish uh, <laughs> loop, but you get the idea. And as you can see, I've got quite a few Ableton projects that I can go through. All of those have got loops in for every channel, and yep, I can mix and match them all. All those projects that people think have gone to waste, all these loops that have gone nowhere. Try try loading those loops into your new projects, mix and match them, make something new, get inspired. Okay, so tip three, clips. Right, now, imagine that I'd set out to make, say, a trance song. And I'm working on this beat, and then I just come up with this bass line. Now, I like the bass line, it's kind of cool, but today I want to make a trance song and this bass line is not going to work for the trance song. Now, obviously I could save the, the project and then it'll be in my Ableton folder as I just showed you before, or I could use a uh, save it into my clips folder. So what you do is go to your user library and click in your clips folder and as you can see uh, you can make new folders I've got one here called baselines so I could just let's call this I don't know rubber base and then I'll just drag it into my clips folder and you can see here rubber base now I can just delete this clip Get on with making my trance song, and then at a later date, I can think, really need a bass line, really need a rubber bass. Go back to my clips, as you can see. Oh. I'll play it in time to your song. in time to your song and it saves all the processing you've got on it as well all that good stuff see if I double click on it put it back on my track you'll see it's got everything that I originally had on it all good all right this nicely brings us to tip number four this thing here MIDI control. This is a Max for Live MIDI effect, and it's a free, if you don't get it already in Ableton, uh, I've got here MIDI control. It doesn't come uh, pre installed in Ableton. You have to go on the Max for Live website and download it, but you get it for free. And this thing is a godsend because the ways of controllers here. I have an Akai LPK25 little keyboard. I've got an Akai MPD32. I had my favorite MIDI controller, which is not even a MIDI controller, is my trackball. Now, the thing with the MPK25 and the uh, MPD32, neither of them have a pitch bend control or a mod wheel. And that's why this lovely wheel on the trackball is crazy good because with this MIDI controller, 
it's just got a nice control of the mod wheel and the pitch bend back to 64 and oh, I've got no after touch on that patch but if I did okay quick easy one so tip number five last of my quick tips all right now I know there's gonna be a bit of a controversial one um when you're making loops always do it in session view don't do it in a range view now I know some people aren't going to like that. I mean, myself, I was a Cubase user. I used Cubase for nearly 20 years, something like that, before I switched over to Ableton. And it took us a while to get my head around using Session View. Now, the thing, now the reason even why I'm saying make your loops in Session View, not in a range view, is basically when you loop stuff around, if you're in Session View and you make a four bar loop or an eight bar loop, all your loops have to be eight bars. Whereas if you're in session bar, session bar, if you're in session view, you can have a four bar drum loop, four bar shaker loop, and you can have, as my um, bass loop here, you can have a 40 bar loop and they're all gonna run together. Now, the advantage of this is simple. Basically, if you're gonna record in a loop, press record, I had it run for 40 bars or whatever, and I just played it the same thing over and over again. Now, I might think that's a bit pointless, but I'm going to show you why that's not pointless. Because I'm not the best keyboard player in the world, and Session View makes this an advantage. Because if I play the loop round, it with the beat. There, did you hear that? I missed the first note on the beat. Uh, that was a pure accident, but it sounds kind of good. And that would never have happened if I was just using an eight bar loop. And same goes as well. Sometimes I'll hit the wrong note, the wrong key. Sometimes there'll be other kind of time and discrepancies. And sometimes those things end up making the final track. They're just happy accidents that just happened because I'm rubbish to play the keyboard. That's only going to happen if you use the session view. Okay, so that's it for now. It's been C. Lopez Tutorialism. Peace.